I have finally contracted gig flu. We're also <laughs> gonna be attempting to put up the coven in our bedroom ourselves tomorrow. Ah, why have you let go? What's this? And then the other thing that has me in a chokehold at the minute is who the fuck did I marry? final nine days of February and my only goal for the rest of the month is to finish my TBR. So I have five books on the agenda. I have these four plus an ebook which is my December Patreon pick which is Bone Spindle by Leslie Vedder. So in an ideal world I would get through five books in this vlog like by the end of the month. Is that realistic? We're gonna have to wait and see. I'm I feel like I could do it you know because two of these a manga and two of them I'm also currently reading so I've already made a start but we will start off I guess by talking about the two that I'm currently in the middle of because those are the ones that I'm theoretically going to be knocking out first. The main one I guess is Crown of Swords by Robert Jordan which is book seven in the Wheel of Time series and this one is definitely going to be done by Sunday because that is when the live show for this book is going to be. So I'm currently a co-host for the Wheel of Time along which is created by Sandra from Got A Thing For Things and and we all know at this point that my relationship with this series it's very rocky it's been up and down and this one is a very classic struggle between light and dark it's an adult epic fantasy series a very well known one there's a tv adaptation now as well but we're following the dragon reborn who is reincarnated into every age and is pivotal in the battle between light and dark so in this series we are following this age's dragon reborn as he comes into his power kind of discovers who he is what he is and all that means and tips the balance of the scales towards light or dark for good now in recent ages the dark has been winning and we have lost a lot of the ability and the knowledge for I guess like the good side and like everything's pretty dire right now so it is on this age's dragon reborn and his companions to potentially save the world or, or doom it. So we all know that Robert Jordan's writing style is not my favourite there's a lot of filler in there it can be very tedious in parts and I feel like this book while I had very high expectations for it because I really loved book six like book six was my favourite in the series and typically I do like slower novels and slower piecing in series so I thought I would actually get on well with this but so far at the halfway point it is pretty much Perrin and Rand's inner monologue and Egwene shouting at people there's a lot of Aes Sedai politics in here the Aes Sedai are almost like the sorceresses of the world and we have Matt who is kind of doing stuff but I feel up until this point it's been a lot of talking and thinking and not too much actually happening so I am listening to the audio of this which helps me get through the slower parts and not notice the I guess the quirks of Robert Jordan's writing style that really gets on my nerve and I have been doing I've started a jigsaw as well so that is pretty much how I'm gonna get through the second half of this one I do have to read about 80 pages a day to have it done for Sunday and I am going out tonight I, I said I'm on page 360 I've almost finished chapter 19 though so I'm more around page 375 but yeah I still have a ways to go with that one. I'm also reading Dreaming Sun Volume 5 by Ichigo Takano. This one is a shoujo manga and it is one of my favourite manga series. It's almost like a YA manga version of New Girl following this girl who is upset by her family so she kind of decides she's leaving home and she just leaves and she finds this like drunk guy passed out in the park and this girl has never heard of Stranger Danger because he offers her a place to live as long as she fulfills three conditions and the first one of those is that she tells him why 
she left home. The second is that she finds his missing house key. And the third is that she has a dream and falls in love. So she agrees to these terms and she moves into this house that is owned by this guy who's known as the landlord. And she lives with two other guys of like high school age. Obviously a little bit of a dubious setup. And I feel like this volume is definitely following along those dubious lines. She essentially ends up with like a crush on one of the guys in, in the house and things happen regarding that and circumstances change I guess but in this one in particular I'm used to manga having topics that seem a little bit out there like I tend to expect that when I go into manga but there's some very questionable romantic choices happening in here and then we also had a very brief appearance from a pedophile which felt really weird it wasn't in a positive light or anything but it was it was odd <laughs> to say the least so this one in particular is not my favorite volume but overall I really enjoy the tone and I guess the whimsy and lightheartedness of this manga and like other manga that is similar I guess. So like I said I am going out tonight. It is my final gig of February guys. I know if you're up to date on my vlogs I have been all over the country seeing various bands this month. Um, tonight we're going to see Bowling for Soup. They're being supported by Less Than Jake. This is a gig more for Curtis than it is for me although I do actually really like Bowling for Soup. It's really late though. Like I know that this would dismantle the industry if this happened but I am all for going to see a band at seven they come on at 7 30 and i'm at home tucked up in bed by 10 p.m obviously like support acts are key to the music industry and also it's like a really integral part of like those bands gaining popularity and momentum but the first i think support band for bowling for soup is on at 7 30 less than jake is on at like 8 30 for 50 minutes and then bowling for soup i think are only on at like 9 30. So it's going to be a late one and until then I'm going to try and see I've got like an hour until I'm making dinner I'm gonna see if I can finish up editing my House of Flame and Shadow spoiler vlog finally contracted gig flu. I thought I was gonna get away with it. You guys know I had seven colds last year and it made my entire life miserable. And I knew that I was pushing my luck. Like a two week trip plus four different gigs. Like, was I gonna be able to survive that? The answer is no. The answer is no, because last night, just before we went out, my throat started to feel itchy. And by the time we got back, I was like, yeah, no, um, I I think the gig flu is settling in. I am feeling fine though. It's one of those where like my throat is sore, my nose feels kind of weird, but like, I feel fine like I don't feel feverish or shaky or like fatigued or anything like that so fingers crossed it stays this way and it's just like a bit of a sore throat for a couple of days but last night when we got back I always have to read at least one chapter or something before I can sleep to kind of get me into the sleeping mood I guess so I did finish off Dreaming Some by Ichigo Takano I gave this one three stars it is my least favorite one of the series that I've read so far and the reason for that is the weird content in here like it romanticizes a relationship with a minor that I I mean I know it's of its time but this was translated in 2009 so it's definitely a product of like the early 2000s and or early to mid 2000s I guess the noughties but essentially I don't want to spoil 
all this, which is unfortunate, but like there is one character in this house who is older than the rest of them. Like most of them are high school age. And then there's like one guy who's like, I think he's in his early twenties and something potentially romantic is starting to brew between the main character who is of high school age and this older character, which I gives me the ache. It gives me the ache. And it's a shame because generally like I like all of these characters, but this is not, this is not it. And age has been brought into question a little bit. It's not entirely unchallenged. And I feel like it is gonna get to a point where it's like the age difference is just not it. But sadly that did not happen <laughs> in this volume and therefore it is three stars. But overall, like I do really like the fun, like light, funny tone of this that deals with like slightly darker topics in places and this is still like a manga series that I really love. I noticed actually when I was putting this in my spreadsheet the last time I read a volume of this was in 2021. It's now 2024 and weirdly like it didn't feel like I hadn't read this in ages like I knew where I was up to pretty quickly and got into it pretty quickly so that is wild but let's not make it another three years before I pick up volume six. So now I'm actually gonna dive into another manga. This one has a magical element, but I would say that it is like overall, the tone is still shoujo like romantic or contemporary in direction. And that is Fruits Basket by Natsuki Takaya. Oh, by the way, a big thank you to Claire for sending this one my way. This one was gifted to me. And this one is also Claire's Patreon pick. So this one was my Patreon pick for January. It's one that I've wanted to get to for a long time, but you know what I'm like? I hoard the first books in series and then I won't read them until I read sequels, but then I end up starting them anyway. But this is a manga series that I've heard a lot of very good things about. And it actually has one of the most bizarre synopses that I've encountered, like even by manga standards. So this one is following a girl who after something tragic happens in her home life, she finds herself living in a tent on private property. She doesn't know that it's private property, but it is. And I think the land is owned by this rich family. And when a member of this family embraces somebody of the opposite sex, they turn into an animal of the Chinese zodiac. That is all I know. I did start this. I read the first couple of pages last week, I think. I was just flicking through. And I think that the tragedy is that the main character's mother has died potentially, because like the very first page is her like, waving goodbye to her mother but it's like a, a photo so i have heard i thought that this was going to be like pretty light and fun similar to dreaming sun although like i said this does have like a glimmer of heavier topics but somebody in my comments said that this ends up like much darker and much like harder hitting than you expect going into it which i actually really love like a hard hitting contemporary manga that has all of the like light hopeful funny notes as well literally my favorite and this is like a very beloved manga so i'm hoping that i really really love it so today i'm doing sprints with my patrons which is what we currently have open here i'm planning on going till about five i need to finish editing my house of flame and shadow vlog i've just taken the thumbnail picture for that so i can sort that as well and when i have because i've only got like 20 minutes to edit on the vlog so when i've done that i'm going to work on the february in a circle patreon bookmark which i am behind on because i was away for the first half of the month and listen to wheel of Time, which I'm currently like I think about 440 pages into. This is your 30 minute low impact ride. This is a zero pressure ride. However you want to ride this ride today, I want you to lean into what feels good. So I finished my jigsaw while I was proofing my vlog this morning. I'm gonna leave it here for a bit because you know, you're just gonna sit with it for a while. I've had a lot of people ask why I don't have poster glue and why I don't stick them down and frame them. I mean, guys, I've done six puzzles in the last like three months. I have 13 to do. Like how much wall space do you guys think I have? Like I'm happy to do the puzzle, put it back in the box and then do it again later. Cause that's the fun for me. Like I like to do the puzzle. I don't really care about the picture after it's done, but I will I'll break that down when I come back. I'm going to my dad's this morning, just in general, because I need to see him. I haven't seen him since I got back from Thailand, aside from when he rescued me from the side of the road last week. So I have a couple of things that I got him in Thailand that I need to give him. And we're also <laughs> gonna be attempting to put up the coven in our bedroom ourselves tomorrow. So I'm also gonna go and raid his garage and see what tools he has so that like I have less than I need to buy when we go to B&Q later today. If you guys know I'm renovating my bedroom, right? Like we know that this is happening <laughs> at this point. But the last time I left you, we were waiting for a quote on the COVID. Like we'd done everything that we could do up until the COVID and the company was taking like forever to get back to us. So he eventually got back to us with a quote of 1,000 pounds for one and a half days of labor to put up 
up COVID. We're not including the cost of the COVID, which would have been 400 pounds on its own because we were going to get like big heavy plaster stuff. So I was like, absolutely fucking not. Like that is an outrageous price. So then that's almost, including the price of the COVID, that's almost what we paid just for the plastering, which I feel is a much more technical job and also was like four and a half five days of labor so i have no idea where that price came from but we reached out to another company and asked them to come and have a look and give us a quote and they literally they just didn't get back to us so we're gonna do it ourselves which means we're compromising on the quality of the coving because instead of getting like full pr traditional plaster coving we're gonna be getting is it like polyduroline which is like almost polystyrene and we're gonna scream at each other tomorrow probably as we try and put it up so i will of course take you guys along with me while we go through the process of doing that but right now I'm gonna head to my dad's and see what I can steal out of his garage before I go and buy the rest of my stuff later. Let's go. Ah why have you let go? <laughs> that was rude. I sound like shit. I just realized but I did manage to get everything done that I needed to do today. I did skip my workout because I, I feel okay considering I have a cold. But I'm not at 100% so I was like fuck it we'll make it up either tomorrow or next week. And then we went to Morrison's and we got a pizza for dinner which was amazing. I'm about to be playing Fortnite in the next like 30 minutes or so. But I have started a new jigsaw which is a 500 piece 101 Dalmatians one. This is one that I found in a charity shop and it is so old. Like, I feel like you can tell with the quality of the picture and the packaging, like, this is, I would say, at least 15 years old. It looks, like, late 90s to me, maybe, very early 2000s. But I'm working on the side pieces. I looked at all of, like, the colour blocking and thought it would be quite difficult, but I'm actually doing all right. And while I'm doing that, of course, I'm listening to Crown of Swords. I'm absolutely not going to get my hour and a half listening goal today on this. I currently, I should have three hours left by the end of today and I currently have four hours and five minutes left, but I have 526 pages into this one. I really need to start a spoiler vlog for this. <laughs> Because I'm nearly done. I think I am going to run it together with book eight though. Because I've literally only just had a thought. And sadly it wasn't a good one. Like content warnings. Because there is a sexual assault in this book. That is not challenged or even treated as a sexual assault. And it's kind of gross. Like it's major ick like the way that it's presented in here and then kind of brushed off as nothing so i'm still a little bit shook by that by the, the just like casualness of it and then i feel like it's only really just picked up because i think i mentioned like it's a lot of monologuing a lot of dialogue and now we've got to a point where i feel like some more interesting things are happening and some of the characters like starting to stick up for themselves a little bit and get themselves out of these quite tedious situations that have been happening for the majority of this book and I'm enjoying it a little bit more. In terms of Bruce Basket, I am, I think three out of 12 volumes into it or like episodes into it. And I'm enjoying it enough so far. I kind of forgot because I always knew or assumed that Bruce Basket focused on the contemporary elements of it. And it so far like it does. But in that, I kind of forgot that it's fantasy. And I, it's weird because like when I read like standard books, fantasy is obviously my favorite genre. But when it comes to comic and manga, I actually much prefer contemporary. So the fantastical element in it is throwing me a little bit because I just, I'd read so little fantasy comics and manga that I forgot that that was going to be a thing. And I think it's just because when I read fantasy, I like it to be really detailed, really in depth. And in manga, when you have fantasy, it tends to be not like any i guess less intricate it's just the way the information is presented there's obviously things like less text and more happening in like the picture format and i like my fantasy to be like essentially just info dump the history of the world at me please that's where i'm up to with reading i don't know how much reading i'm gonna get done tomorrow i really need to keep on top of this because the live show is on sunday but i have a feeling especially as we're figuring out what we're doing with the covid that that is going to take all day if not like leading into sunday as well i do hope i feel better though soon because like this is truly not it <laughs> Why else would the ceiling go? If you go around that way, I can stay here tonight. 
is a real good indicator of how I am currently feeling but I have two hours almost exactly left of Crown of Swords and I have finished yet another jigsaw and if I'm being honest I kind of feel like I have other things I could do while I'm listening to an audiobook instead of endless jigsaws today but I also feel like shit so we're gonna do another jigsaw this is one of the ones that I picked up last week it's just a 500 piece Linda Jane Smith one and yeah I'm gonna dismantle the Dalmatian one which was very very easy which is surprising because I thought that this would be a lot more challenging than it actually turned out to be and all of this was like really easy but yeah I'm hoping to finish the like 100 pages that I have left of this pretty soon because we did encounter a problem with the coven yesterday which I'll talk to you guys about in a bit so we didn't actually manage to finish it which means that i'll be spending probably most of my day with curtis getting that wrapped up so we are almost done with the coven we have had some challenges like this wall decent this wall also decent above <laughs> the bay window there is a dip in the ceiling which i feel we have now accentuated by putting coven up because this piece had to go in like slightly on a slant to actually match up with the top and the bottom lines of the coven and then we have the chimney breast so the issue with the chimney breast is that the exterior corners that we've cut at 45 degrees will not match up and i asked a few people who know a little bit of something about things and they essentially said that the problem is like chimney breasts are notoriously wonky and our ceiling is also wonky so the slant of the ceiling will not match up with the not slant of like this wall. So what we're gonna have to do is, we're gonna have to put one piece across here and then patch up the corners here, like just keep trimming them until we can get them to fit because then we'll have like the nice sharp corners on the chimney breast and the bits that you don't see as much will be like maybe slightly wonky, but we did, where are they? Oh, they're over there. We did cut the corner. So this one is the big piece for the breast, this one, is the side alcove and then we cut the corner on this one but we didn't trim it to size because we didn't have the rest of that corner coving in so we are almost done i'm hoping that we can get this chimney breast up even though it's going to be fiddly like a little bit quickly and then we can break for lunch and we're done until maybe tomorrow if either of us has time taking all the nails out and filling in the gaps with like regular like gun filler and my verdict so far of coven is that it's not actually all that difficult like i actually cannot believe that i was quoted 1400 pounds for this because i feel like if even though this is more lightweight like i will say like we chose lightweight coven instead of plaster which was the original plan but if we can put this up in like a day and a half and surely somebody who knows what they're doing can put up plaster coven quite easily in a day 
and a half as well. Who knows though, because I'm not a trained professional, but I'm gonna get on, try and get this chimney breast up. And then I guess I'll show you the finished product. I might take some photos of it as it is now when we're done. And then I'll show you the finished product tomorrow or whenever it is that we've got the sealer up and cleaned and like sanded all of the bits of like straight bits of filler down. I finished the coven and it looks kind of a hot mess, but kind of all right at the same time. Considering what we were dealing with, I'm really proud of what we managed to achieve. But I have also finished Chronosaurs by Robert Jordan, which is actually, it's real good because the live show is in like 10 minutes. But sadly, this is overall, I'm not sure if I would say that it's my least favorite book in the Wheel of Time series so far, but I have given it two stars. So it is my lowest rated book in the Wheel of Time series so far. I gotta say like, a big part of that is that I could not overlook the fact that a character was sexually assaulted and we just like were real casual about it and glossed over it. And obviously times have changed, and especially with this specific instance, I know why it isn't challenged and why it's super casual and why the character is laughed at when they tell people about it. But reading that from like the perspective of being in 2024, like blew my mind, like I was shook. So if we push that aside for a second to talk about my thoughts on the rest of the book. I thought that this one took a long time to pick up. Like it was 500 pages before I really got into this. And while I did really enjoy, I would say the, the 150 pages after that, but not like the very end of this. I, it was a long, long time coming. Like these books are always slow to start. And by the time we get to the end, I'm always like, should I just go into the next one? But then we always have like hundreds and hundreds of pages of like a super, super slow burn at the beginning where it's just truly not holding my attention. I think that now at book seven is the first point in the series where I kind of felt like I could just not continue this and that would be fine because the, the series continuously gets more and more complex and we have more and more side characters that are kind of prominent but they don't feel very different from each other in the way that Robert Jordan writes them and so it's hard to keep track of them unless you literally write down like this person is an Aes Sedai affiliated with these people etc for every character because I don't feel like in terms of the writing in, there is enough about them that makes it clear that they like who it is and like a lot of the names are similar as well which also doesn't make it kind of any clearer and while I am enjoying the series for the most part are enjoying it enough to continue for me to fully keep track of every single thing that's going on I would have to pay way more attention to this than I currently am and I don't care enough about this series to pay that much attention to it I'm kind of in it for the payoff and because it's such a iconic influential series that as like a fantasy reader, I do think it's important for the most part to be familiar with series like this. And one of the reasons why I personally like to read older series is to have that knowledge and see like the references from older classic, like well-loved fantasy. Um, and how it's like illustrated in more recent books and kind of be able to trace those little things back to their origins. But yeah, like I feel like while the last book was my favorite book, a lot of the stuff at the beginning of this, while it wasn't the most interesting because it was a lot of monologues and a lot of dialogue, it also wasn't particularly interesting. Also because of how complex it's now getting, it is also starting to lose me a little bit, which on top of it being not the most interesting thing in parts is contribute into that. So I feel like with every book, I'm like also following it a little bit less. Um, I probably am still gonna continue because obviously I am a co-host for the read along and I'm kind of at this point, at the halfway point, I do feel like I'm kind of invested. But that one was definitely not the best and saying that I do know the book seven to 10 are a slow point in the series and I feel like they gradually get slower with 10 being the worst before it picks up again. So I'm already going into these kind of knowing that and I feel that's why I kind of wasn't surprised or taken aback by the fact that it took me like a long time to get into that one. I was being really lazy when I finished that and after I'd had dinner and I did want to go upstairs and get fruits basket, which I'm like halfway through now and not loving that. And I'm surprised that I'm not, I'm not disliking it or anything. It's just not really captivating me all that much. And I'm not feeling all that compelled to pick it up. I am of course going to finish volume one and I hope that my opinion changes by the end. But just in case it doesn't, let me know. Cause I know that fruits basket is super like beloved. Let me know whether you guys think it 
gets better throughout the series and more captivating or whether you think that if I don't love volume one, the collector's edition as well, so it's like 12 episodes or like issues, then should I not continue if I'm not like obsessed? Let me know. But because I couldn't be bothered going upstairs getting that, I have started another book, which is, was it Debbie's Patreon pick from December? It's Bone Spindle by Leslie Vedder, which is like a Sleeping Beauty retelling. And all I know about it is that it's gender bent and Sleeping Beauty is a boy, like Briar Rose is a prince. And we're following a treasure hunter I think uh, maybe a regular hunter, I don't know, who are both female, that are on a mission to find something and along the way they are potentially going to have to wake up Briar Rose with true love's kiss, I'm assuming, but I don't really feel like they're into that. So far it's throwing me, like I'm not very far into it at all, I'm like 5%, which is probably like 20 pages, but it feels like a western. And I don't know if that's just me, but it's reminded me a lot of like Sebastian de Castell, like the Spellslinger series, which I did after 100 pages into the first book but it almost has that kind of tone in parts which you all know I don't like westerns but also it's throwing me because it's obviously like a fairy tale retelling in what I'm assuming is a very fairy tale setting like a classic high fantasy kind of setting so that's throwing me through a loop but looking at the time that I've been recording the live show for Wheel of Time yeah it's about to start in four minutes so I need to get myself set up but I'll check in with you guys when I have something to report. <laughs> I feel like I've hit a peak with how ill I've been feeling last night and today. I actually slept on the couch last night because I felt really bad with how much I was coughing that I didn't want to keep Curtis awake any longer and like I couldn't sleep because of my coughing. So I came down, I made a cup of tea and I actually slept with Brie on the couch and she was honestly just such a sweetheart. She is like, if you ever need a nap partner, she is down. Like she will nap all day. And she did, she slept all through the night and then it was only like, it was past like 2 a.m. when I managed to get to sleep, but she slept all night and then napped with me through most of the day as well. So I also like took a complete sick day and slept through all of the morning into like mid afternoon. But I did manage to rally because I have my monthly Patreon 24 hour readathon that kicked off a couple of hours ago. And I wanted to come and fill you guys in a little bit like before it started, but I ended up like with not feeling great. It took me a while to get myself together. And by like now the readathon's already started, but I have finished my first book. The prompt for this month is sequel. And I do have a book that I've started that I'm reading specifically for the prompt and the readathon, but we did roll the double. So I finished off Fruits Basket by Natsuki Takaya. I still want you guys to let me know down in the comments whether you enjoy this series more as time goes on or whether the contents of like this volume one is the same kind of thing that I can expect from the rest of the series because the synopsis of this, I guess, is pretty much as it's laid out at the beginning. It is a girl whose mother has passed away and she went to live with her grandfather, but her grandfather has other like children and grandchildren that are going to be taking him in while his house is being renovated and then coming to stay with him so they can look after him because he's getting on a bit and they won't take the girl as well. So she ends up sleeping in a tent while these renovations are happening and she puts the tent up on private property and she finds out that the property belongs to this family that when you embrace them, they turn into the animals of the Chinese zoo. Zodiac. So she ends up moving in with them because they feel bad that she's living in a tent and has nowhere to go. And obviously like they build a friendship and like a relationship as time goes on. So I liked it, I did, but I do feel like I could put this down and never read another volume and like be absolutely fine with that, which is why I want your guys feedback. Like does it improve with each volume? Or is this kind of what I can expect from the rest of it? It had that like endearing, slightly chaotic vibe that I really like from the manga that I read. I don't know whether I didn't like this because it does have that fantasy twist to it. I think that the overarching plot of this is that there's potentially a curse on the family and or like that the turn into animals when they're embraced is a curse and that they're going to try and break it throughout the course of the series. But I actually generally enjoy contemporary aspects in series like in 
in manga where I don't like fantasy very much. So I don't know whether it's the fantastical aspect that put me off. Although I will say it is definitely pretty minimal and that the contemporary and slice of life elements do take the forefront. But I enjoyed the art. I enjoyed the characters. I did enjoy the plot. I just, I just enjoyed it though. Like nothing really blew me away. But in the last chapter, which is chapter 12, I think. Yeah, we have the backstory of one of the characters. I think, is it Hitari? Hattori and I really enjoyed that it had like a romantic element to it and it was kind of like dramatic and bittersweet so I really liked that section of this the most but overall like I very much like just enjoyed it it was good I liked it but I have no drive and need to pursue the rest of the series. So this one was Claire's Patreon pick. I think it was for February. And this was also actually a gift from Paige. So thank you very much to Paige for sending this one my way. Next, I have, I still have Bone Spindle. I haven't read anything since yesterday. So I'm still only like 20 pages in. But the book that I've picked up specifically for the 24 hour readathon is Bloodlands by Stacey Marie Brown. This one is the fifth book in the Savage Land series. And it's also my Patreon book club book for the month of February. This one is a post-apocalyptic kind of fantasy romance series following a girl who is a human in a world that is divided between the humans and the fae. She is the ward of the king and from her position of privilege she steals drugs and medicine from the trains that transport them from the human and fae sides of the city and vice versa and puts them on the black market so that the people who need the money can benefit from the profits of the drugs instead of it lying in the pockets of the elite. And one day when she's doing this she gets captured by the fae as the train is going through the checkpoint to the fae part of the city and she's thrown in a maximum security prison where she meets the alluring and intimidating Warwick Farkas. Obviously from that point I'm now in book five like I was gonna say the plot has progressed quite a lot and in some ways it has but especially like with the setting of the beginning of this book in some ways we're almost exactly in the same place we were when we started. I have always kind of said about these books they're extremely addictive and compelling but they're actually not like all that amazing like I wouldn't necessarily recommend them as like this is the best book you're gonna read but if you want a fun time and a book that kind of like makes you want to read it really quickly then I would recommend this series but at this point of book five I do feel like the novelty is starting to wear off they are a little bit repetitive and I don't have a whole ton of motivation in picking this one up which is one of the reasons why I chose it for the 24 hours because they are incredibly quick reads so if I just knuckle down I can probably get through it before the readathon ends at like six o'clock tomorrow these sprints are technically supposed to go until midnight it's like just past yeah it's exactly 9 p.m i don't think they're going to go until midnight because i have the fatigue that you have with a cold where even though i haven't been awake for all that long i do kind of want to go to bed so i'm going to do like definitely like another one to two hours but i want to get because i'll probably when i'm sick i normally sleep for about 12 hours every night and i need time to squeeze that in before i wake up and hop back on sprints tomorrow but if i roll a double at this point i'm going to be flicking over to bone spindle so I'll check in with you guys and give you an update whenever I get to a significant point in either of the books that I'm currently reading. Hi girls. So fellas, show them what you did. Hi girls. What made you decide to come here? Uh, well, clearly my stellar dating skills. So I am just about to head to bed. I have still been sick for most of the beginning part of today, but I actually feel really good now. I got to like the middle of the afternoon, like 2, 3 p.m. I was doing sprints all day as well, like up until six, but I got to the middle of the afternoon and it was like a flip had switched and I feel so much better, which is great because I was really like, I hate being sick. Like I lose patience with it real quickly and like the kind of novelty <laughs> wears off. So I was really starting to lose my patience, but thankfully I feel better now. So I'm hoping that tomorrow is like a much better day once I've also had like a sleep, which is great because I was also worrying because I do have an appointment later on tomorrow that I was worried that I was maybe gonna have to cancel if I was feeling terrible and I also have two videos one video that I need to film tomorrow but the plan was to film two in the morning which I feel like I can now go ahead and do but during the readathon I got up to page oops page 330 in this 350 page book and then I finished it off after the sprints had ended now I'm a little bit screwed because I felt like shit the entire time that I was reading this book not because of the book although arguably the book is not the best thing I've ever read but because I felt so like meh and I was operating on half a brain cell I have not filmed the spoiler vlog that I'm supposed to film for patreon for this book 
and I also, if I'm being honest, because I was in that kind of like cold fog as I was reading it, I actually don't remember all that much about it and I literally just read it. But this one was kind of like, I've said before that this series is repetitive. This one felt kind of almost extra redundant because we end or we very almost end the book in the same place that this book starts and not in like a completionist kind of come full circle kind of way. In a, you're pretty much in the same damn situation that you were on page one, like what the fuck is happening kind of way. I did give this one two stars. I think I said when I was introducing this book, like at this point in the series, while I do enjoy that they're so fun, and so fast paced and so compelling. I'm at the point now where I'm kind of getting bored of that because there is so little diversity and progression within anything happening in this series. We only had one explosion in this book though. And I only realized when that explosion happened that it had been the only one. So that was nice, I guess. And also because of the setting, we did have a little bit of like a different tone. I will say that because I was reading this sick, I actually enjoyed it more than I feel like I would have done if I wasn't sick when I was reading this because I was only operating on like literally half a brain cell and that half a brain cell was could focus on this and absolutely nothing else so I got through it a lot quicker so again I feel like if I was well my mind would have like roamed a lot more and I would have kept putting it down and stuff so two stars probably on equal footing as the rest of the series it's just I'm getting a little bit fatigued with this series now after reading them like every month back to back for the last five months and I'm really glad that the last book is coming up in March I do think that there is plenty to be either more books in this series or a spin-off I definitely definitely don't think it's following this direct storyline because it's been a while now it would have been like two years since the last book was published but I can say pretty much with certainty that it's highly unlikely that I will continue on with this series after I've read book six. But that one is my Patreon book club book down. So now the only book that I have to read to complete my TBR and catch up on all of my obligatory reads that keep rolling over is Bone Spindle by Leslie Vedder. And I'm still only like 30 pages into it. I'm not entirely confident that I can read the entire 400 pages of this book before Friday, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a try. And if not, at least I'm gonna get like a couple of hundred pages into it and I can finish it off at the beginning of March alongside the next vlog that I'm filming which spoiler alert is going to be Shelby or Scrap It episode 2. Thank you guys so much for all your feedback on that as well like that video like I hoped that it would do well <laughs> but it exceeded my expectations of what well could be for my channel because while it's not my most viewed video on my channel ever, no video has grown as rapidly as that one did because that achieved like where it is within like a couple of weeks. And normally any videos that I have that are anywhere near that like grow over like months and years. So thanks for all your feedback. I'm glad that you guys really enjoyed it and that you liked how it came together. And I'm really excited to get into episode two of that for you guys because like obviously I have no idea what's coming up in those videos until I start filming them. So this evening after I finished my book I started season six of Love is Blind which as y'all know is a low-key addiction for me. It took me so long to start it because we cancelled or like paused our Netflix subscription so I begrudgingly like paid for it so I could watch Love is Blind and I've only watched three episodes. I've just binged through three episodes and I'm enjoying it so far. It always takes me like a little while to warm up like as you're getting to know the new contestants but I have noticed that like there's a lot of stuff going on in this season that we're hearing about from contestants like they'll say like somebody will be saying something or one of the girls will be saying something to another girl that a guy has said to them which has the girl sh that they're talking to shook but they never show it actually happening within the dates and I found that odd and also like people like things going on behind the scenes that is being alluded to and like referenced so they haven't cut it because of that but they're not showing like the full unfolding of the incidents which I do feel is a little bit unusual because normally they show both sides for the drama but regardless I am enjoying it like I always tend to enjoy it and then the other thing that has me in a chokehold at the minute is who the fuck did I marry which I don't think I've told you guys yet that I'm watching in this. If y'all don't know what this is, this is a 55 part TikTok series with each part being between like six and 10 minutes long. So part 36 is commitment about a woman who was dating during, I think she had started in 2020, but she was dating, like fell in love with, married and then divorced a pathological liar. And this is like the entire story of their relationship from when they met up until at part 36, I'm at where she's just thrown him out. So they haven't gone through the divorce proceedings yet. But like, as she's telling it to you, like you know that a bunch of stuff is sus. But at the point that I am at, she's only at the tip of the iceberg at what she knows that 
that he's lied about and the rest of it is gonna come out in the divorce proceedings and I am living for it. I hate that it's on TikTok and I know that people have compiled it onto YouTube, but I'd already started it on TikTok when I found that out and I can't be asked finding a reliable upload on YouTube. But yeah, I do generally hate that it's on TikTok because it's not convenient to watch something that's multiple hours long on TikTok and I keep like pausing it where I'm up to. And when you open the app again, like it's lost it and TikTok isn't the best thing for like saving your history. But yeah, those two things are what are consuming me at the minute. I feel like I'm gonna struggle to get into Bone Spindle actually, not because of the book, but just because I'm at a point now where I've finished everything apart from Bone Spindle and I have Lovers Blind and Who the Fuck Did I Marry consuming my attention. I feel like it's gonna be difficult for me to get into a new book when I'm like right at the beginning if you know what I mean. But anyway, I'm gonna go to bed because like I said, I do have to film in the morning and it's 20 to 12 because I've been sleeping like a ridiculous amount. Now that I'm starting to feel better, I'm not tired, but it's much later than I normally would go to bed. So I feel like my sleeping pattern's gonna be fucked, but I mean, I'm just gonna try my best. Also, I've been using this duvet on the sofa while I've been watching TV for like comfort because I'm not well. And now Hamilton's lying on it and I piled it on top of him because I want to take that upstairs now. Piled it on top of him hoping he would move because he didn't like it and he's just stayed. So I don't... I don't know what we're gonna do about that. <laughs> it has come to my attention that I am absolutely not going to be finishing the bone spindle today. I My life has been taken over by Love is Blind, like that is what I'm gonna be doing with my evenings until I'm done. And I did finish all 50 parts of Who the Fuck Did I Marry? And then found some of Legion's responses. So that is done. So that's a couple of hours of my day every day that I'm gonna be getting back. But in terms of the bone spindle, I haven't read all that much. I am 18% of the way through it and I don't know how much I'm going to enjoy this book because it is very like action and adventure based like straight from the bat like already we're right in the thick of the action and it's reminding me a lot of when I read the Amy Kaufman books the ones I can't remember what they're called but the ones like where it's like Indiana Jones meets some alien stuff and I remember thinking about it that like I don't find it interesting to watch other people like solve puzzles and things. Also considering that this is like a retelling of Sleeping Beauty and it's like fairy tale esque I'm finding that it reads more like an Indiana Jones or like western type of story and we all know that I don't really like those kinds of things. So the next vlog that I'm going to be filming on my channel is going to be Shelve It or Scrap It episode 2 which is very very exciting so I think what I might do is get to the end of like whatever my closest chapter is in the bone spindle and film that video and then come back to it a little bit later because I'm just not really feeling it right now. I also started reading it when I was feeling well. I am feeling much better like I'm not 100% but I'm feeling much better now and because of that I feel like I was retaining absolutely nothing like the entire time that I wasn't feeling great. I was essentially no thoughts head empty. I was reading things to pass the time but holding absolutely nothing in my brain. So I think the best thing for me to do at the minute is just to put it down for a little while and come back to it a little bit later when I'm feeling more in the mood for it instead of like pushing through it just for the sake of having it finished because what is actually going to happen is because I don't want to read it I'm just not going to read it and then I'm not going to read anything else because I should be reading this and it's just not it's just not ideal you know so yeah next week's vlog or oh, it won't be a week it'll be longer because I have no idea how long it's going to take me to film episode two of Shelf It or Scrap It but do stay tuned for that if you are at all interested aside from that guys please don't forget to like this vlog if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and I'll see you guys next week bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you're go where nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no